you know toppers won't tell you anything have you, you ever know? asked a topper how do you study or how long do you study or do you have any techniques that you can help me with and they'll just answer you like yeah. oh i just read twice once or twice and that's it i'm done i remembered everything right we know that doesn't happen so i'm about to tell you some tips that no toppers will ever tell you and it's going to change your life it doesn't matter if you're studying for an exam or even if you're trying to learn a new language or you're preparing for a training program at your workplace this is going to help you and you'll thank me for it so my first tip is to become a teacher that is you have to pretend that you're the teacher and you're teaching it to your let's say you can teach it to your baby your pet or even your stuffed toy so when you actually try to teach someone who doesn't know anything about your topic what happens is you will make the topic that difficult topic you will try to simplify it in your own words and that actually fills the gap of knowledge in your own brain because you're trying to process it trying to process a difficult topic into something very simple and that takes a lot of work for your brain so teaching is the best method ever 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 so albert einstein once said if you cannot explain something simply then that means you don't understand the topic well enough so studies have shown that students who try to teach someone else have a better memory on that particular topic than the other students who sat and read the same thing next is spaced repetition so suppose you got a lecture on healthy eating in class today and you took down the notes now when you come back home at night right before bed you should read it once after that you should read it every other day of the week the following week you read it two times a week and the week after that you read it once a week so do this for a month and see how easily you're able to retain the information rather than reading the topic within 3 days and then never opening the book again so by spacing the study session between spaced intervals what you actually do is you are not letting your brain forget it because there's a forgetting curve within hours and days you forget all the information that you got today so before it hits the bottom we're catching it up the next technique is something very familiar to you all it is the pomodoro technique now this technique tells you to study for 25 minutes and take a 5 minutes break do this for 2 to 3 times and then take a longer break let's say about a 30 minutes break so this is the pomodoro technique they say 25 minutes for an average person but you need to find out what is your time what is your amount of time that you can stay focused so to test this you have to use a kitchen timer a manual kitchen timer or an alarm clock so what you have to do is you have to open up a topic and start reading before you start reading you set the timer once you feel a little distracted or sleepy you stop the timer now this will help you identify your amount of focus time so this is the amount of time that you can focus at a stretch okay so that is your amount of time for the pomodoro technique now i recommend not using a phone while setting the timer because the right when you go to set the timer you get a notification from your best friend saying that hey so and so has uploaded a new reel and then the next one hour is gone so yes <laughs> no phones recall now what you have to do is once you read a topic you have to close your book then close your eyes and try to recall every important topic that you can remember now then after that you open your book and you see which topics or points did you miss out on and those topics that you missed out on put an arrow mark or some kind of sign so that next time you read you don't have to go through the easy portions and waste your time there just you just have to look through the marked arrow marked portions and learn it This review and recall is active learning you're actually making your brain work hard to re recall the memory recall what you've learned so this right here is a 
mnemonic that I use to help students remember the external carotid arteries branches, okay? So you can see it's very goofy. It doesn't dramatically sound correct, but it's so easy once you remember this mnemonic, you'll get all the arteries correct. You know what's the fun thing about mnemonics? Your brain retrieves that information from your long-term memory. So mnemonics, even if you're, it's something that you just made up and you find it very goofy, your brain actually remembers it much easier than if you just read the topics just like that. Next is storytelling. Now, how does storytelling comes in learning? Well, visual learners, they appreciate the images that they can visualize in the brain when you tell a story. Auditory learners, they listen to the vocabulary or the, or the voice of the listener. And kinesthetic learners, they connect emotionally, emotionally to the story. So even if you're a visual learner, auditory learner, or a kinesthetic learner, you will be able to remember the story in your own way. Maybe it's with images, your visual memory, or with the sound of the voice of the person who's speaking, or kinesthetic, you remember the emotional part of the story. And either of the way, you are able to remember the story, which will eventually help you remember whatever you need to learn. Next is memory association technique. So in one of my videos, I use this image right here. What do you see? It's a five, right? So there were things that you needed to remember, like the categories in hospital waste management. So each category was like one, two, three, four, five, like that. And each of it had a different thing. So number five was cytotoxic medicine and discarded drugs. So cytotoxic started with the letter C and I saw that in the letter, in the number five, you can see a C. Can you see the C right here? Yes. So that is memory association. You find something closely, something that resembles closely to what you're trying to learn, whether it's numbers, facts, figures, whatever it is, you try to make up an association. Next tip is testing. So once you've finished learning, you need to test yourself. You need to know how good you are or you need to know how good you stand among other competitors. That's when academy, a school or a a coaching center comes into play. You're being tested. You have a limited period of time. You can't write the exam the whole day. It's probably like an hour exam. So you have to think fast. You have to make your brain work fast. So this is another way of active learning. Next is having a timetable and planning. You need a timetable for the day, for the week, for the month. You need it even till the last hour of the exam. So when you have a timetable, you know exactly what needs to be done. Knowing what and when to study saves a lot of time. Not only that, it directs our energy and focus to one thing at a particular time. So when you, do, when you don't have a timetable, there's a good chance that you'll underestimate the time that you have remaining for the exam. When you make a timetable, be very specific. Don't write chem study chemistry at one o'clock. No, you should write study chapter eight of chemistry at one o'clock or write do the MCQs of physics at 2.30, from 2.30 to 3.30. So that's how you should be making timetables. Next is chart paper. Now you may wonder what? Chart papers? What do we do with chart papers? Instead of using sticky notes, have chart papers and write everything, formulas, your diagrams that you need to remember. Do it big, write it big. Not very tiny sticky notes that you will never even read. It's just stuck on the wall. It looks like a decoration and gives you a pseudo feeling that you're studying, but you're not. So yeah, go for the chart paper. Sticky notes can be used to do to-do lists, but um, a chart paper is much better when you need to study. Next is previous paper analysis. So suppose you're, uh, uh, suppose it's a neat UG entrance exam, a multiple choice exam or a PG uh, neat exam. So all these have been taking place for so many years and there's papers from all these years. So what you have to do is you have to get all those papers, you sit down, you analyze it. You, one week you spend on that. You analyze the papers, you write down the topics from which the questions are asked. The topics, I'm not 
saying the uh, exact question but the topics where the questions came from this helps you understand the pattern of questions that are being asked you'll also get to understand what is important and what is not next is revision oh my god i'm having so much fun making this video um revision is something no one does and the ones who do revision automatically becomes the toppers yes i don't have much to say about revision than that it must be done at least three to four times before you appear for an exam doesn't matter whichever exam it is you have to do a subject at least three to four times before you appear for the exam to be very confident to be the topper you have to do this that's all next is kicking off those distractions we know who are the distractions I know it's hard to kick these out of your life but if you can keep these distractions away till you achieve your goal I'm telling you it is worth it I know it's hard because we live in a world where we are constantly we have this fear of missing out but if you can keep these things away I'm going to tell you that you are automatically going to be the topper. You don't even have to study. You just have to keep these distractions away. Next is sleep. I know you're thinking, "Huh, oh, what a video." I mean, who asks us to sleep? I would rather sit an all nighter before an exam. No, that's wrong. You need to sleep before your exams because your brain need to process everything that you study till now on the day of exam for uh, which is there only for a limited period of time and to do that you need sleep sleep is rest and this helps the neurons communicate with each other quickly so sleep is a must next is the food the food you eat has a direct effect on your neurons neurons are the cells of our brain So unhealthy food which is high in fats and sugars they cause inflammation to the neurons and it stops the neurons from making new neurons so this causes eventually this causes disorders like anxiety and depression limit your caffeine intake it's okay to have coffee but limit have a limit to it because excess caffeine causes sleep problems anxiety palpitations etc Next is YouTube and Google. Now, how can you use that? Well, YouTube to search the topics that you need to like let's say cardiac cycle, the heart cycle, how does it fun- how does it work? So you just type it in, you'll see so many channels explaining it. See the duration and how much of a time you have accordingly you choose a um, choose a video. and you watch it get the concepts clear then and there but make sure you keep the phone aside after that okay medical school you have to identify a lot of surgical instruments so you need to know how it looks like so you need to google up the name see the images and learn it so youtube and google they're your best friends next is exercise aerobic exercise it increases the blood flow to your brain and it also increases the size of your hippocampus which is responsible for learning and verbal memory next is breathing exercise now studying can be really stressful especially if you're studying by yourself so you need to know how to calm yourself deep breathing is one of the best ways to calm yourself you breathe deeply it sends a message to your brain to relax and automatically it affects all the part of your body and you are relaxed so deep breathing is very important and the last tip i have for you today is affirmations practice saying affirmations every single day affirmations boost your positive thoughts it boosts your brain it activates the rewarding system in your brain you need to do it every single day and if you don't know how to do it you can google it up it's there's so many videos there's so many blogs about it you should try it it's it's wonderful so these are all the tips that i have i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'll keep uploading more and more videos if you have any topics that i should talk about or um um teach about do let me know in the comments thank you